So the British ended up learning about how to make a treaty with us. So they didn't come here. They, they did try to come here and just take over. They thought they could just move in and be, be a boss. But then there was a Nishnabe Odawa chief named Paniak, and there was a Seneca chief named Gea Soto. And both of these guys were influential war, war chiefs, and they ended up making a confederacy. And they gathered all different people, Odawa, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, Seneca, uh, um, Shawnee, and other people. And then they ended up taking surprise and surprise attacks, coordinated surprise attacks. They took over a number of different forts. And one of those was Fort Pitt, where Pittsburgh is, and the other is across the river here at Fort Michilimackinac. So if you ever hear, get to hear that story about that, uh, and you go over to Fort Michilimackinac, you'll hear somebody tell the story about how they played a, a game of lacrosse and they made a, a ruse of it and they ended up throwing the ball into the gates of the fort. They ran in there, stormed in, and then they ran back out, they threw the ball out and they pretended that it was just part of the game. And then they did it again, but this time the women were all lined up at the gate, the doorway, and they had under their blankets uh, guns and uh, war clubs. And then all the Anishinaabek, as they went in, the women handed them weapons. And then the Anishinaabek went in that, that fort, stormed it, and then they killed mo many of the officers and then others they took as prisoner. And then they would ransom those prisoners later. The one thing I wanted to stress with you here, especially all you Anishinaabek that are here from, from Bauting, that we used wampum. It's not just a Haudenosaunee thing. It's not just a Six Nations thing. It's not just a Mi'kmaq or Mi'kmaq or Maliseet. It's actually a Anishinaabe. And this, this was diplomacy used throughout the Great Lakes as far as the Mississippi. And as early as the 1690s, we were using wampum here. And we spoke on strings of wampum and we delivered strings of wampum to each other as a pledge of promise to our word. And then we also decorated them with, with that, decorated our pipes with that, even decorated our war clubs with that. So there's a war club in France and it's got these beads studded right into the, uh, the wampum, I mean the war club. So <coughs> there's a lot of what we would call diplomacy that's tied to wampum strings, wampum beads, and then wampum belts. So the one thing I wanted to also say here, we don't call this a uh, wampum belt. We don't wear it like this, like uh, WWE, we don't. <laughs> and how I said we used to do is like this. And these would have strings around here. So in museums, you'll see belts like this that are thinner. And then you'll see, if you go on the internet, you'll see a lot of pictures and you look for Huron people. And you'll see they wear it like this. And then they have a bag here and they tie these to the bag sometimes. So the French actually called this colère. Who speaks French here? How do you say collar in French? Yeah. So C O. L L I E R is when you're reading the French and you say, then they'll say the speech and they'll say the, the chief got up and the chef got up and said this, not the cooking chef, but the chief. And then it'll say colère. That's, so then that's when you know they use wampum. So Michelin was a place where they used a lot of wampum. And so their, their word for it instead of belt is actually closer, this colère that it's, that it's around. And so that's the other thing that they said. This guy, Haudenosaunee guy, an Ottawa guy, came up and he wanted to make peace. And they had been at war. And he came up from his canoe. He landed his canoe on the beach. And he put all his belts up like this. And he started singing and talking to all the people on the shore. And he told them, I'm coming in peace. And like I mentioned this morning, when you showed wampum, you weren't 
nobody was allowed to touch you. Nobody was allowed to kill you, even if you were in active war. And if somebody came into the battlefield like this, they were not to be touched. And then that was a signal for peace. So that's how powerful these belts were at that time, that everyone abided by them. And in our language, the word for belt is gajipazuin. So gajipazuin is like what I'm wearing here. You put on a belt, you get a belt buckle, but that just means it, it girds you, it holds in your gut. But in our language, we call this migis, migis a pikkan. And now in our language, pikkan, pikkanan is a harness for a horse. But we had what we call this was a thump line. So when you say this, it's like this. This is a thump line. You put a load on your back, eh? And you put this, the migus, the thump line of wampum. And so a thump line is used to carry things out of the bush, heavy things out of the bush. And so actually for us, what this means is the message is the burden. The message is the thing that's being carried. And that's what's the heavy part. 